Okay, in our previous video, we attached a new hard drive to our Ubuntu uh, virtual machine. We discovered it using FDisk-L and LSBLK. We used FDisk in order to create a partition on it. We used MKFS to create an EXT4 um, file system on it. And then we mounted it and put some data on it. Okay, let's take a look and see where we're at now. So if I do df, let me get to the right screen here. If I do df-h, we're going to see dev sdb1 is loaded to mount mn or forward slash mnt forward slash hdd2. Now, key thing here, I could have mounted this anywhere. I mounted it there because that's a folder specifically created for it, but it could have been mounted anywhere. It could have been mounted into somebody's home directory or a whole group directory or something like that. Point is, it can go anywhere in the file system. And when you move to that folder, you are on that file system. So if I do an ls-l forward slash mnt hdd2, it's going to show me the folder that we created there. Okay, so everything is great. Here's the problem. I'm going to shut down now dash R. And here's the issue. And we'll see this when the system shuts down and then comes back up. That drive will no longer be mounted. So when you mount something, it's only mounted for as long as you're actually, that system is up and running or until you manually unmount it, which you do with the U mount command. By the way, you can reference the previous video to see how we created the heart and mounted the partition. All right, so now that I'm back up, I'm going to log in as me, and I'm going to do df-h, and we have no sdb1. And if I do an ls-l, if I do an ls-l for forward slash mnt forward slash hdd2, you're going to see that we've got nothing in there. And that's because that mount doesn't survive the reboot. What happens is when you reboot the system, it looks in a, into a file called fstab. And it's going to be, I'm going to nano this file so we can see it here, sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash fstab, which is for file system table. Whoops. There we go. And here we're going to have everything that is mounted. Now, for several of these, you're going to see they're mounted by the UID. So dev disk by UID, and then it gives the UID for it. I'm not going to do that because that's a lot of extra typing. But if you want to find that UID, let me show you how you can do that. It's BLK id and this is going to show you for every drive it's going to show you the uid for it so i want dev sdb1 and right here you're going to see that uid uid equals df bc 0 c 8 b and that's why i'm not going to type it in it's a unique identifier it's actually kind of useful to do that which is why um why that's done here and you'll notice you'll have the uid for the drive and then the type and then the partition uid as well okay i'm going to do this by path dev sdb1 because it's going to be easier for me to type so i'm going to sudo nano forward slash etc fs tab again and i'm going to put in my options here so i'm going to mount dev sdb1 and that'll mount my sdb1 to forward slash mnt forward slash hdd2 so that's going to be where i want it to mount so you'll see here we have the device that we're mounting right here you'll see the documentation file system mount point type so my type is going to be ext4 that's my file system just as a note when I mounted this in the previous video, I mounted it manually. I didn't use a mount dash T to specify the file system type. And that's because the OS is able to figure it out on its own accord. But if for some reason you're using an older OS that might not be able to, you can do mount dash T and specify the file system type of EXT4.
Now my options, and I got a bunch of different options here, but I'm going to use defaults, not default, defaults. And that's going to specify this is going to be, we're going to use all the defaults. It's going to be read, write. It's going to auto mount. It's going to do a whole bunch of different things. You can, by the way, choose by setting different options, choose to not auto mount. That might happen sometimes if you want something that's only going to be available when you need it. So you'll mount it, use it, dismount it. By putting it in here, you can actually make it a little easier to do that. Your mount command becomes a little bit easier. All right. So my dump is going to be zero and my pass is going to be two. Let's talk about what that pass is. So I'm going to come up here to this one. I'm going to scroll over. And you're going to see this is our root file system. So its mount point is root, CXT4, it's got all the defaults. But you'll notice the pass number here is 1. So what that means is on the first pass, it's going to mount the root. By setting this to something higher, it means root will mount before this mounts off of root. And that's what I'm looking for. All right, once I'm happy with it, I'm going to do a Control O to write out and a Control X to exit. Okay. Now, at this point, I still don't have it. If I do disk free dash H, I'm still not going to see dev SDB1. But what I can do, because I've put that in my FS tab, I can sudo mount, and I don't have to type the whole command. I just can say I just want to mount mnthdd2. And what will happen is it will look in my FS tab file. It will find that and it will mount it for me. So if, now if I do, let me clear the screen, DF dash H, we're going to see dev SDB1 is mounted to forward slash MNT forward slash HDD2. If I do an LSL for MNT HDD2, you'll see that our data is actually there. Now I want to unmount this. So I'm going to sudo unmount forward slash mnt forward slash hdd2. And then if we do our ls, you'll see there's nothing in there. Do our df dash h, we'll see that it's missing. That's because I manually unmounted it. But it should automatically mount this time. So let's do a shutdown now dash r. And we'll take the system down. We'll bring it back up. And we'll see if it's automatically mounted because it's in our FS tab file. It should. And then we'll see this is exactly what you need in order to have your new drives automatically mounted when the system boots. Almost there. Okay. So I am going to log in as me. Clear the screen and we'll do DF dash H. And let's find right here dev SDB1 is mounted to MNT HDD2. And so I'll LSL MNT HDD2. And there we go. We now have our new drive automatically mounting.